Good afternoon, everybody. It's November 23rd, and today I'm really excited because I will be planting garlic for the first time in my life. For my entire adult life, I've been renting homes, and I never quite knew where I was going to be from year to year. Growing garlic involves planting your garlic in the fall and letting it mature for six or seven months and then harvesting it in the summer. So I've never had the luxury of being able to live in a place long enough to have a timeline where I could actually harvest garlic. But now that I actually own a home for the first time in my life and I have all of this space, well, it's November and I'm going to plant some garlic for the first time ever. When you plant garlic is going to be entirely dependent on the area that you live in. I live down on the southeastern coast of North Carolina and the winters here are very mild. So when you live in a place like this, garlic needs a cool season, they need cool weather to grow the roots, they want to be cold at night. So it's important that you not plant your garlic too early in the year. So we got our first freeze last week. So now that we've seen a frost freeze and we have some nights in the upper 30s coming up in the next week, my soil temperatures are going to start dropping. So now is going to be a good time for me to plant the garlic because they're going to get that cool weather that they need to develop their roots. So when you do decide to plant your garlic, keep that in mind. You don't want to plant it while the nighttime temperatures are still too warm. And you also can't wait so long in the season that if you're in an area where the ground freezes, that the ground is no longer workable. So you kind of have to plant it in that in-between period. And right after your first frost and freeze is probably a good time to do that. Now the first tip I want to give you on planting garlic is to buy your garlic from a reputable source. You probably shouldn't just go out and buy garlic at the grocery store and plant them. While some people do that and they have some success with it, you don't know what kind of garlic you're getting from the grocery store, so you don't know how it's going to perform in your climate. You could also introduce some kind of foreign disease into your soil. So for that reason, I suggest you reach out to your local cooperative extension and you find a variety of garlic that will do well for you. In front of me, I have two different types of garlic. I have Spanish Roja garlic and I have Lourdes Italian garlic. And the one on the left, Spanish Roja, is called a hard neck garlic. The one on the right, the Lourdes Italian, is called a soft neck garlic. And what kind of garlic you grow, hard neck or soft neck, will be dependent on your climate and your preferences. I live down in zone 8 and in zone 8 you're probably going to have better luck with a soft neck garlic. Soft neck garlic does not require the cool temperatures that hard neck garlic requires. Hard neck garlic really likes cold weather. So if you live in the, the upper Midwest or the Northeast or areas of the West that sees uh, very cold winter temperatures, you may want to grow a hard neck garlic. The soft neck garlic prefers milder winters. So it's a little bit of a gamble for me to grow a hard neck garlic here in such a warm zone. Uh, the soft neck garlic will probably be better for me. But the reason why I'm growing this hard neck garlic is because it was recommended from my local cooperative extension. And that's great because hard neck garlics are typically uh, from garlic lovers classified as stronger, more garlicky garlics. So if you can grow a hard neck garlic, you may like the varieties better. However, I will say this Lourdes Italian garlic has great reviews for a soft neck. It's supposed to have that really great, true garlic, keep all the vampires for miles away, garlic flavor. So I'm excited to see how both of these perform in my area. So the first thing you need to do is, once you get your garlic cloves, you have to break them all apart. You have to break the bulbs apart into the individual cloves because that is what you will actually be planting. And when you break these apart, you only want to plant the larger cloves. The larger cloves are going to give you a much nicer, fuller head of garlic. The smaller cloves, you're just going to toss or you're going to throw them in the compost pile. So they're not going to do anything spectacular for you. So right here, this is an example of a fantastic clove that we are going to plant. Now this clove of garlic right here, uh, when you orient it, you want to orient it with the garlic pointing up towards the sky. This is where the green growth is going to come out and, dry, and, uh, and drive up towards the sun. This right here, the base here, this is where the roots are going to grow out of. So always orient your garlic pointing up towards the sky. Okay. 
Okay, we broke up all of the Spanish Roja garlic, and I want to show you what the good cloves of garlic look like. These are nice sized cloves of garlic that we are going to go ahead and plant. They're nice and big, and the bigger the cloves of garlic, the bigger the bulb we're going to get out of them. So here's some examples of stuff we're just going to throw away. These little tiny cloves, they're not really that good. They're going to give us inferior heads. They're not worth planting. You'll also see, uh, I waited a little too long for me to go ahead and buy the garlic, so these are actually a little bit moldy. So this isn't exactly the finest quality getting them so late in the year. So you may want to buy your, your garlic cloves earlier in the year. Now that we've peeled both heads of garlic, you can see what the individual cloves look like. We have 24 Spanish Roja cloves and we have 30 Lourdes Italian cloves. So I'm going to put these in rows. We'll break them up evenly so I'll have 12 in one row and 15 in the other. One thing I want to show you is that in the garlic you'll see that you leave the skin on when you plant them. You do not peel the skin off. The skin stays on. Okay, we are now over in the bed that I'm going to place my garlic. If you'll take a very good look at it, I already prepared the beds and I already tilled my trench. And I made that with a little hand trowel. And you may be asking, what are all these stakes? Well, I'm glad you asked, even if you didn't. All of those stakes represent where I'm going to plant my tomatoes next year. I'm going to put determinant tomatoes in this tomato bed, I've already decided and I'm going to weave them together. And I'm going to get away from the monoculture type of planting next year. I'm going to move more towards a polyculture. The insect pressure where I live is just horrendous. It is so hard growing tomatoes here because of all of the insect enemies that I'm going to be growing symbiotic uh, plants together that benefit each other. And Garlic is known to be a great companion plant to tomatoes, and because of the odor, it's known to be a natural repellent to insects. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying out where my tomatoes are going to go. Each one of those little contractor stakes will represent a tomato next year. There will be, there will be a total of 12 tomatoes in this tomato bed that I intend to Florida weave together. And I will be interplanting the garlic in rows. And this is where the sun comes and rises every single day. So I'm, I'm putting the rows in for garlic in such a way that tomatoes will not shade the garlic out. So what I'm going to do next year is where I plant my tomatoes, I will be mixing them in with garlic, basil, and marigolds because they are all known to repel different types of insects. I'm tired of using chemicals, even organic chemicals, and I want to set myself up for success by interplanting naturally pest resistant plants and hopefully that will keep them away from my tomatoes. Okay, you see the trenches that I dug. These are about two inches deep and that's about how deep you want to plant garlic. Now when we plant our garlic, the very first thing the garlic wants to do is grow roots before it grows anything else. So I'm going to coat all of my trenches with bone meal because it is a fantastic source of phosphorus and phosphorus encourages root development. So before we do anything, we will dust all of our trenches with this. Now that we've dusted all of our trenches, we're also going to put down a handful of an all-purpose 555 or equivalent fertilizer. This is a Job's Organics. 444 I believe so it's very balanced so we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing and we are going to sprinkle a handful down in, in our trench and now that we have both our bone meal and our organic 444 or 555 roughly balanced equivalent fertilizer down we are going to place our garlic and as I mentioned before we are going to place it with the bottom down pointing up towards the sky. So this is the Lord's Italian garlic. I'm going to put 15 of these in each trench.
And as luck would have it, sometimes things don't work out exactly according to plan. There's no way I can possibly fit 15 of these cloves in the trench. I can only fit nine. So if you see what this looks like, I'm going to have to go ahead and add another trench, which is not a problem. I have plenty of room in the middle that I didn't dig out. So I overestimated my spacing. If you'll see, you'll basically need probably three to four inches of spacing in between each clove, because if you figure it's going to grow into a two to three inch clove, you're going to have to space them apart at least three inches in order for them to have a radius of 1.5 inches each. Okay, all of the garlic is in. The first three rows is the Lortz Italian. You can see the spacing and what that looks like here in the first three rows. It's about three inch spacing of clove. The next two rows are Spanish Roja, and you can see that right here. And then this, this final row right here, I had to put the leftovers. The first three are the leftovers of the Lortz Italian, and then everything after that are additional Spanish Roja. So, like I said, this is my first time actually planting this. So roughly one clove of garlic will allow you to plant uh, one four foot wide row. Now that all of the garlic is planted, I have to backfill the holes. Here I bought one bag of organic mushroom compost, and I'm going to backfill all of the planting holes or the planting trench with this mushroom compost. Mushroom compost is a great source of nitrogen, so I put all that bone meal down to help support the root growth. This will help feed the green tops once the green tops kick in. And it's a very, very slow releasing form of, uh, of nutrients, so it's, it's not going to promote the garlic from growing too fast. So I'm, I'm going to avoid using any kind of quick release soluble fertilizers. So here is the organic mushroom compost. We're just going to sprinkle this on top and that will slowly feed the garlic all winter long with a very steady stream of nutrients. Okay, now all of the garlic is planted. And full disclosure, one problem that I had while I was planting it was I was placing the compost too aggressively and it was actually knocking the cloves over. So what I did was I exposed every single one, made sure that they were still sticking straight up and true, and I compressed the mushroom compost around them all. You don't want to place the soil so aggressively that you knock over the cloves. And one way to avoid all of this is to just press your thumb two inches deep in the soil and drop the cloves in one by one. But my soil is still pretty new and not as good as it should be yet. And I wanted to add supplemental fertilizer. So that makes this process uh, necessary in order to really fertilize your trenches. But if you don't want to go through this extra step and you just want to place them in holes and you have really good quality soil, you can go ahead and do that. And now that all the garlic is planted, all we're going to do is slowly backfill the soil around it very gently just to make sure that we do not knock any of the garlic cloves over. And then press down each trench, firmly but gently. Now all of our garlic is in, the trench is backfilled, the trenches are labeled and everything is looking really good. So there's just two things that we have to do. The first thing we need to do is mulch on top of them with this natural hardwood bark mulch. And this is a very, very important thing. And it's often overlooked by gardeners. Uh, most gardeners, they come in in the spring, they plant their crops, they harvest their crops in the summer and the fall, and then they rip them out after the frost and then the garden beds sit empty all winter long and the soil stays exposed all winter long. And that is a problem because although the sun is not as strong in the winter as it is in the summer, it still is beating on the soil for 12 hours every single day. And sunlight, especially the ultraviolet rays, are baking that soil and it's killing the top layer of that soil. What we need to do with all of the beds that we are not currently using, we need to cover them with something. Because if we do not cover them, that sun is going to sterilize the positive microbiology in the first inch or two of that soil, and it's going to deplete it, 
and when you come back in the spring it's going to be beat up soil before you even begin to use it so I'm using hardwood mulch to cover up all of my soil because if you see this right now all of that soil will be exposed this garlic is going to be in there until June or July and I can't have the sun beating on that garlic for, uh, beating on the soil for the next six or seven months killing all of the microbiology in the first couple inches of that soil so I will be mulching this bed and every single bed that does not have things growing in it if you look uh, a lot of these beds are in use uh, the beds that are in use I can't quite mulch yet but once I rip things out I will put the mulch down and you don't have to go out and buy shredded hardwood mulch you can buy uh, you can buy pine straw you can buy wheat straw you can plant a cover crop like some kind of some kind of winter hardy grass or some kind of nitrogen fixing green just have something here that covers up this very very precious soil so the soil doesn't get depleted all winter so I'm going to put down about an inch of mulch so I can't see any of this soil at all and here is the bed after I put about an inch of the shredded hardwood bark mulch down it's not a very thick layer but I'm going to come through and probably thin it once it uh, once it decompresses because right now it's really fluffy uh, the garlic should have no problem poking through only about an inch of mulch so now that the mulch is down the final thing I have to do is simply water in the bed and this little mulch layer on top will do many good things for us it will insulate the garlic in the event that we get an unseasonably cold freeze it will retain moisture to allow even moisture while the garlic is growing it will protect the soil from the sun and it will continually decompose throughout the year and slowly feed the garlic and the rest of the soil as well as attracting beneficial microbes over the winter everyone thank you so much for watching today's video if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these if you like this video please hit the like button if you're curious about any of the things that I use in my garden check out the video description where my Amazon storefront is linked most of the products that I use are linked in that Amazon storefront thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all again next time